Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in our studios today in a special episode of Talking Sports with Val. We're going to talk girls basketball sectionals. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about those yet. Weather kind of got to us a little bit last week as well. So um, the sectional draw happened last Sunday, Val. A lot of interesting matchups for our teams. And uh, let's get right into it. And uh, let's start off with uh, sectional 18. Uh, being held here at Rochester High School for uh, two of our schools, Rochester and Tippecanoe Valley. Uh, interesting looking draw here for uh, for both of the schools. Right, and let's um, put something out there just at the start of this program. One thing we're looking for is has a team won as a team had a three game winning streak during the season. Because if you haven't had a three game winning streak all season, it's hard to imagine to come up with one now. Mm -hmm. And the two hottest teams in this sectional just happen to be the two teams that got the buy the buys. Culver Academy has won seven in a row, and Tippecanoe Valley has won five in a row coming in. Uh, Culver Academy added a game with East Chicago on Saturday, so they'll have a chance to make it eight before they play their first sectional game. Uh, but right now, uh, the two Tuesday night games uh, both figure to be close games with John Glenn taking on Bremen and Rochester playing Knox. Uh, I think John Glenn beat Bremen by four when they played earlier in the regular season, but they, everything about this John Glenn Bremen game looks like it's going to be a tight game. Uh, Everything about this game looks like it's going to be a pretty low-scoring game. Bremen held a very uh, good cast and team to just 33 points yeah. Yeah, on Thursday night. But this is a John Glenn team that held Argus to 37 and held, uh, you know, I think held Samantha Redinger to 19. So this is a team, I don't think this game will be played at a, at a, at a high tempo. It's a Bremen team. I mean, they had, you know, it's uh, more guard-oriented. They're loaded with young guards when you talk about Kyla Foster and Eliana Grubbs. Against the John Glenn team, of course, they lost the two Haydens. One graduated, the other transferred to Tippecanoe Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, both teams similar in athleticism. Uh, uh, you know, John Glenn's kind of long defensively. They're kind of long-arm defenders. Uh, just looks like it's going to be a, a, a close, low-scoring game. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking down here. Obviously, if Rochester can get past Knox, you know, they've they've already faced Valley once this year. And, you know, Tippecanoe Valley, 18-3. and three. They made it all the way to uh, semi-state last year, and, and I, you know, I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this with the people that they graduated last year, but I think they're a better team this year than they were last year. And their style of play might be more well-suited to a postseason tournament mm -hmm. with the physical style of play that they play. They're 18-3. and three. Two of their losses are to Western, who's been uh, a ranked 3A team most of the year. The other right. loss was to Northridge, who was... Yeah, and Northridge. I mean, first of all, Northridge is really good, and second yeah. of all, Northridge went wild from three point range in that game. I think yeah. they had like a eleven or twelve threes in that game, uh, and beat them by twenty five. Uh, but this is a Valley team. I mean, they've got the best record, and they might have done it. They might have played the toughest schedule on top of it. Right, all. right. I mean, uh, and the, Valley went five and zero against other teams in the sectional. They played every. They played every other team in the sectional once. They went all five. And the smallest margin of victory in those five games was 15 points. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a Valley is clearly the favorite. I mean, they, you know, the, you know, they they, they had the, that long break after the Knox game. They didn't play for over two weeks, and then four games. And then they play four games in seven days. And what do they do? They hold West Lafayette hit to 30. They hold Kokomo to 32. They hold. Uh, Wawasee to 31, and they hold Ma Manchester to 31. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a math major. I, I know we're not supposed to do math on the year, but that's 31 <laughs> points a game over four right. games. And it's not like they were playing teams that can't score. I mean, Brooklyn Buzzard scored 23 against Rochester the other night. She scored three against Valley. Yeah, and That's two words, Chesney Miller. Yeah, I mean, she is – they're so good defensively. They got Gabby Gonzalez back. So they, they went from being a really good defensive team to being an even tougher defensive team. Right. Ava Egolf had a career high twenty four points against Wawasee the other night. Um, you know they they won that West Lafayette game when they couldn't make a shot, but they still held on and one. And you know the, the, I think the, the big fear was after Macy Peterson came down with her torn ACL, what were they going to be like? Well, Lucy Hayden has stepped in and she has played excellent basketball. She had twenty four in a game at that Carroll Holiday tournament. Um, has stepped in and they really haven't they really haven't missed too much of a beat. Yeah. It seems like you know next man up for the for the Vikings has been uh, you know definitely the case for them you know even starting the year you know with the graduations I mean I just I like I said I'm just blown away that they graduated you know as much talent as they did and and they come back and and just 
put another team together just right. so good. Right, and it's a different team. There, there isn't a Caden Smollett on this mm-hmm. team. There isn't a Lily Alt. There isn't really a Molly Moriarty or a Corinna Styles. Yeah. But they've just kind of filled, they've just kind of um, become a different style of team. It's one of Chris Kindig's best coaching jobs, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah, and he he does such a good job of making sure that everybody understands their role, right? And you know they play very well in those roles. Yeah, I mean Carly Steiner's given a boost off the bench. I mean a, mm-hmm. a six one girl who can score and can shoot threes and can post up a little bit, mm-hmm. and you know th- th- and she comes off the bench. I mean it's just they've got um, it, again it's not an explosive team offensively, but uh, they have um, they have kids who can score, yeah. and they're not. I, certainly, e golf is probably their their go to, but they they're not totally reliant on her. Yeah, yeah. If you slow her down, I mean, there's other options, and they just play such good defense that it's you know you can be having a little bit of an off night if if you're Valley, and they play such good defense that they'll make up for it. Mm-hmm. And would they would they let Knox Knox scored what fifteen points against them right and, and I mean, Rochester Knox scored is, and Rochester scored sixteen yeah I mean Knox is regularly putting up in the sixties mm-hmm. I mean just crazy numbers and they held them to fifteen right and they could be seeing them on Friday possibly yeah uh, so. yeah it would be it would be interesting if we had a Rochester Valley game. Friday night, the second game of the sectional. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the sectional semifinal. Obviously, we're hoping for that. It would be the first time they would have met in the postseason since the 2015 semi-state. Yeah. That was a little bit of a big game. Yeah. <laughs> so that is sectional 18 held here at Rochester High School. So we're really going to be looking forward to that. We will have yeah. uh, all five of those games right. on uh, RTC and IHSA Champions Network. Yeah, but Culver Academy is playing well. Like we mentioned, they won seven in a row, had a really great win over number three Mark. Class 1A number 3 Marquette Catholic on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This team is, and their defensive average is down to 37. Yeah, and they had a big win against Bethany Christian as well. Right. I mean, I know Bethany has got some injuries they're dealing with, but still a very good team there. Yeah, and, Culver Academy is, yeah, I mean, defensive average down to 37 against a pretty tough schedule, mm-hmm. but Valley put 56 on them mm-hmm. when they played during the regular season. So if it yeah. came down to that matchup on Saturday night, would Culver Academy be able to stop Valley? Yeah. Well, it'll be an interesting one. We'll be there for all five of those games, so we'll have that coverage for you on IHSA TV and on RTC4. So let's move on down the road a ways to North Miami High School. A couple of our schools participating in the 2A sectional down there, hosted by North Miami, and uh, right out of the gate, only one quarterfinal game, and uh, that should be a really good game here. Wabash and Winnemac, and a couple pair, a couple teams that haven't played in a little while, <laughs> each other. First times they've played since 2002. Yeah. Wabash beat Winnemac in a sectional semifinal that year. Wabash wound up winning the sectional that year, the whole, the whole sectional. Um, but of course, that was Co- that was Coach Sweeney back then. I don't remember who was the Wabash coach back then. It wasn't Coach Stone. It wasn't Coach Stone. No, he, yeah. he's only been there since 2015. It seems like he's been there for it does yeah. centuries. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know. Um, when you, this is a, a, an intriguing matchup to see how each will go at each other defensively. Um, you know, Wabash has their big three with Caitlin Honeycutt and Briley Boggs and Kiara Wilson, and mm-hmm. Winnemac has their big, what do you say, their big four with Maggie it's, Smith and Candace Croft and Sadie Popejoy and Marissa Iverson. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'd almost say it's a big five with Piper Link. Yeah. Um, how does Wabash defend the post? Because they don't really have a true post player. I mean, Wilson is, I, I consider more of a wing than a post. But Boggs can play guard and the wing. Uh, will Wabash try and press uh, in terms of defensively again? And I'm probably, I always say I'm in a bad position to talk about Wabash because I saw them play their worst game of the season when they scored only 14 right. points against Rochester against a 2-3 zone. But Winnemag does play a 2-3 zone. They do have that in their in their arsenal defensively, but they can also play a one-three-one, and they can also play, you know, a junk defense. I mean, Coach Stasiak uh, can come up with something creative, and then they can work on it over the weekend. Um, not not making excuses for Wabash, but it was a it was a Saturday afternoon game, and I know Kira Wilson was way under being a hundred percent in that game. Yes, I mean, we were in fact shocked how how much and how how kind of I mean, how she was able to go at it. Even this she was even playing. We, we, yeah. we, we admired her effort tremendously. Yeah. yeah. 
and she's doing better now. Both teams won their holiday tournament, for what that's worth. Wabash won the Wabash County Tournament. Winnemac mm-hmm. won the Indiana Kitchen Classic. Yeah. So both teams know what it's like to raise a trophy. Uh, you know, Winnemac had that three. You know, Winnemac's lost four of their last five. But the one game they won, they played awesome against Pioneer. Uh, Wabash is, I guess, playing a little bit better right now. Uh, maybe feeling a little bit better about themselves. Uh, I, I, this game, I... Again, Winnemac has, I think, more weapons. I, uh, but the only problem is Winnemac lost to Twin Lakes last night, and Candace Croft didn't play. Yeah. I don't know if they were they're just being careful yeah. with her. I mean, she did play against Pioneer, but came off the bench and played, what, maybe about 10 minutes? If that. If that. If that. Not yeah. a lot, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I think they're probably just, you know, there's nothing to gain by playing her against Twin Lakes. Mm-hmm. Um so I would assume they're probably just trying to give her a couple more days to recover and, and get completely healthy. Uh, to me, and you know, of all the names that you said, I, I think the wild card in this whole thing is Marissa Iverson. Yeah. Because she has something that Wabash doesn't. I mean, you can put Honeycutt up against, you know, the the guards of, of Winnemac, and you can put the guards of Winnemac up against, but I think Iverson really represents something that uh, could be that X factor. I've been watching Tony Stasiak coach teams for a long time, and his teams always, he's always been able to develop post players. And part of developing post players is also developing kids who can feed the post. Mm-hmm. And you saw when she had that, she scored with 16 against Pioneer, and in that game, I think like four or five different players had, a, had an assist on a post pass. Mm-hmm. Link is a really good post passer, mm-hmm. but. Like even Brody Goodman, who's maybe what their seventh player, their eighth player, she had a beautiful post entry pass. Smith can get the ball in the post. Croft can get the ball in the post. Mm-hmm. And if Wabash plays that two three, they'll put Link in the high post, have her catch, and then look down for that. High, and that high low play is just yeah. deadly yeah. Uh, for Winnemac. So that's something that Coach Stone is going to have to counter yeah. at some point or have an answer to. Moving on to Friday there, you have uh, three teams that got first-round buys. North Miami, Lewis Cass in that first game on Friday. That should be a dandy. You know, North Miami hasn't had probably the, the win-loss record that you would, uh, you know, think that they mm-hmm. should have this year. Um, but obviously they're hosting. And you got Lewis Cass coming off of, uh, you know, that loss to uh, to Rochester. So how do they – uh, I don't know if they've had any more. If, do they have any more games, regular season games? Lewis or Cass is at McConaughey tonight. At McConaughey, and so if, they Lewis, got, yeah. if Lewis Cass wins the game, they'll share the TRC with Whitco. Yeah, so still a lot to play for. So for still them. a lot to play for. Mm-hmm. They're not looking ahead. Yeah, uh, you can't. Or you can't imagine them looking ahead again. Lewis Cass is one of those interesting teams, and it seems like we always talk about it, uh, this type of team every year. They're not an explosive offensive team, uh, but they won 18 games. So can you? They won a lot of forty-two to thirty-two type games. Mm-hmm. Can you do that? And can, does that work in a postseason format? Because mm-hmm. uh, again, it, become, it does become more of a half-court game in the postseason. And yeah. while Lewis Cass has been playing half-court basketball for most of the year, but uh, will that uh, will that translate well? We've seen teams uh, that just you know they it just seemed like they won every squeaker during the regular season then. Every type of you know thirty-seven to thirty-two and you know forty to thirty-five, and then they get in the postseason, and they they lose those games because they're just a thin margin for error. You're just walking on a tightrope a lot of the time. Yeah. Again, and St. Louis Cast team that rely, you know Afton Griffin leads them in scoring with thirteen, but it's a team that relies on balanced scoring. Uh, seeing Louis Cast in person, I really liked Hedda Kasunin. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's uh, she gets it. I mean, mm-hmm. she's she's physical, uh, but she moves pretty well. She's a good offensive rebounder. She gets one or two putbacks a game. And they can put her at the high – if North Miami decides to go zone, and probably that's what they're going to do, put head at the high post, and she can pass, and she can also do that little cut to the basket and score off that. So, uh, you know, it was, I think it was 46-31. I can't imagine it will be a 15-point game this time. But Lewis Cass did beat North Miami by 15 during the regular season. Held North Miami to 31. That's, that was uh, yeah. interesting, especially since, uh, you know, North Miami is really – They've struggled defensively late, but they their offense has improved quite a bit of late. Yeah, and you know it's funny. Lori Working always calls herself a I'm a defensive coach. I'm a defensive for a defensive coach. She sure runs a lot of nice offense. <laughs> yeah, it'll be an interesting game. And you know North Miami's two times uh, sectional champion, not two A sectional. Mm-hmm. They won a one A sectional two years ago, and then they won this sectional last year down at Lewis Cass. So uh, until somebody knocks them off, they're still the defending sectional champs. Um, right, and. You know, and- 
another thing, North Miami has moved Lady Musall to point guard. Okay. She's not really playing wing anymore. She's playing the point, point the guard. Point. And um, so if you put Afton Griffin, yeah, Afton Griffin's just a pest defensively, but mm. Lady Musall's pretty strong and might use yeah, that off. She's got a little too. bit of a size advantage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Looking forward to that one. Game number two then on Friday. Pioneer has that first round bye waiting the winner of Wabash and Winnemac. And uh, Pioneer has played both of those teams, and, and they lost by 15 to Wabash earlier in the season. And then you mentioned that 23-point loss just this last week to Winnemac. Um, but Pioneer turned around the next night and uh, had, a, had a huge win on the road at North Judson. Uh, so, you know, go figure, right? <laughs> right. Now, I talked to Adam Berry after the, the Winnemac game, and he said we had, a, we had some open shots, we just didn't make them. And so I think his, you know, again, his mindset is, I think has been pretty even-keeled with these kids. And, I, you know, again, they, maybe they, they made some more of those shots. They certainly made their free throws. I mean, they went 22 for 31 against North Judson, getting 31 free throw attempts on the road. That's Yeah, yeah. They shot a lot of free throws. I don't think the Judson fans were too happy with it, but speaks well that they were able to get it. Yeah. I, mean, I assume that means they were able to get in the paint a lot. Mm. Uh, you know, McKenna Stricker has been leading them in scoring most of the year. She had 15 the other night. She went 13 for 14 from the foul line. But Mia McKegg was maybe the the real straight scoring oh, yeah. 17 yeah. and having one of her better games. Uh, again, uh, curious to know what what Pioneer's mindset will be going into that game. Uh, you know, this is something we we've talked about. I think Pioneer is an example, but we'll talk about other teams. Is that uh, each matchup's a little different because each team can be a little more creative defensively in girls basketball. Mm. And on top of that, uh, the tran the the transition from volleyball to basketball is so quick that I think it takes a lot of a while for teams to get their legs, their basketball legs, and their conditioning underneath them. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of these wide variances yeah. in games. So it's it's hard to know what Pioneer team will show up, but at least they'll have some time off to prepare. Yeah, yeah, they got a game tonight, and then they're off for a week, so uh, they can really put something into that. I, I think honestly, they they the matchup if they can get Wabash would would favor uh, a little bit better. I think what mm -hmm. they what they do, but uh, Winnemac just uh, really was really strong inside. But the way they played against Judson, if they can put that together, you know, uh, talking about. Um, you know, people stepping up. I thought Lois Lair was huge in that Judson game. We'll right. talk more about that on Talking Sports. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, she has really stepped into, uh, you know, helping McKenna with the ball handling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they need that because a lot of a lot of teams are triple teaming her trying to bring the ball up. So it, it, was, it was a good game. We'll talk more about that one. So that's going to be an interesting-looking sectional there at North Miami. Looking right. forward to it. North Miami is a two-time defending sectional champion. Yeah, so – We'll be down there for mm -hmm. uh, for the Friday evening game number two there with either Winnemac and Wabash mm -hmm. taking on Pioneer for that one. So let's move into uh, 1A. Let's start off with sectional number 50 uh, being held at Culver Community. This is a seven-teamer, so just the, the one by there with Oregon Davis uh, waiting the winner of Marquette Catholic and Culver Community. And then uh, Triton, Trinity, Greenlawn playing. I think those are Wednesday games, right? Triton and Trinity is mm -hmm. the first Wednesday game. Mm -hmm. And then uh, game number two on Wednesday will be Westville and Argus will be there for that one on Wednesday. And Triton, Trinity, Greenlawn winner will take on the, the Westville Argus winner. And then uh, Oregon Davis taking on the winner of Marquette and Culver then on Friday. Well, let's look at that Col uh, the Culver-Marquette Catholic game. Uh, is first up. Culver played pretty competitively against West Central on Thursday night. Lost, I think it was forty nine. It was either forty nine forty two or forty nine forty three. I've seen two two different reports. But regardless, Brianna Schlemmer had seventeen, and you know, with her and Alexa O'Brien, they give you that you know in boxing they call it a puncher's chance, and mm -hmm. and in girls basketball I think you call it a shooter's chance. Yeah. If Schlemmer and O'Brien can hit from the outside, and if Grace Sieber can can hit from the and you know Grace is. You know, she, I, I consider her more of a kind of a slasher, but she can hit the three as well. And maybe with their shooting, they can give them a chance. But again, it's a Marquette Catholic team that was number one in the state in defensive scoring average coming into the week, average allowing only twenty nine point one points a game, and they're ranked number three in the state. Yeah, and they're the only team with a winning record in the sectional. Yeah, they're they're going to be and they're the only ranked favored. team in the sectional. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. eighteen I, and three coming in. Right again. Uh, 
you know, if you're any of your coach Kalignan at Marquette Catholic, where well, they lost to Culver Academy on Thursday night, she she maybe maybe she's cursing out loud, but maybe underneath her breath she's saying, kind of a blessing in disguise to get that'll help our team get focused for next week. Right. I mean, you got to look at their route. I mean, they've got a pretty good route to the uh, championship game. You know, Culver Community at four and sixteen, and then a five and thirteen Oregon Davis team. You know, right. it's it's a young Oregon Davis team that doesn't have a whole lot of depth. So, right, um, Kraus and Thompson and Patrick are kind of their big three, but they're not they're not an especially physical team. Yeah, and uh, I think they're all their three best players are all sophomores. It's just. It's kind of hard to win in the postseason that way, but I think Marquette Catholic is a really good freshman uh, who's their leading scorer. So I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I don't know her name, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but again, it's. Uh, I think Marquette Catholic has made strides, but to, boy, to beat Mar. Um, or, or I think Oregon Davis has made strides, but if they were to beat Marquette Catholic or frankly Culver, I think that would be uh, asking a lot of them. Right. You know, down on that bottom half of the bracket, uh, could we see another Argus Triton matchup? That's. Uh, you know that matchup at Culver in the sectional. We've seen that one a lot, and right. Of course, Argus beat Triton in overtime in the sectional final last year yeah. at John R. Nelson. Yeah, uh, you know it's a Triton team. Obviously, you, you got to uh, find a way to, to slow down uh, Addison Veers. I mean, she's right. just uh, a dominant force in the. I wouldn't say in the paint, but she's a dominant force on the court. Yeah, because she has really expanded her game as far as her shooting goes. Right. And they also have a veteran guard in Faulkner, and I really like that Sydney King, who's mm-hmm. played well for them as well. And the yeah. Holly, the Holly and girls, King has some good size too. Yeah, and then Holly is a sophomore, and I, she's a pretty good athlete. Mm-hmm. You'd have to think Triton would be favored against Trinity Greenlawn, and then Westville Argus. Um, the weird, the, what, what a weird schedule! But Westville, they they've only played sixteen games, and then they go the last week of the regular season. They go Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hmm. They play. They played last night. They played Laporte tonight, and they play Morgan Township on Saturday. Hmm. I don't know how that schedule wound up happening, hmm. but to go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're going to bounce back on Wednesday for a sectional game. It's not ideal. Uh, and then again, if you haven't seen Samantha Redinger play in person before, uh, boy, I certainly would think that would favor Argus, just because. Again, I, I'm again. Everybody has max preps. I'm sure West Westville is going to look at. Wait, who is this girl? She's mm-hmm. averaging thirty-two points a game. Yeah, but boy, her style of play is just different mm-hmm. than you than you've seen. I don't think anybody plays a style like Argus does. Yeah, yeah, and they they do a really good job too. You know that little flare screen play that mm-hmm. they run. I mean, it's it's hard to stop. And mm-hmm. you know when she can hit so well from the outside, and then also you know driving to the paint, she's mm-hmm. either going to get the bucket or the foul or both. Yeah. Uh, just a you know a tremendous player for the Dragons, and mm-hmm. I guess the big thing is uh, you know like uh, the other night at uh, at Laville for the Dragons. We'll talk about that more later, but th- she's got to get some help from the rest of her team. Right. I mean, she can't score eighty five, ninety percent of the points. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and right. she has been getting help from her team. You know, um, right? Even Morgan even Barkas it, and yeah, you know, Ellie Bullenbacher and but. Right, and I say that as somebody who's a, who thinks that balanced scoring is a little bit overrated. Mm-hmm. But I mean that that was too high of a percentage against right. Right, I, she she doesn't need him to score fifty percent of the points. Yeah, but you know, twenty percent would be nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Westville coach John Marshall. This is his third stint. It's his first year of his third stint as coach. Um, he he's a veteran coach, um, but we'll see. What he has cooked up, but I, again, I, I want him uh, to again. It, it, it's a guard-oriented Westville team playing Samantha Redinger. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. They played in last year's sectional semifinals. And Argus won by three, mm-hmm. and Samantha Redinger had 22 in that game. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll be there with me, right, for yep. that one. So Can't we'll wait. be there on Wednesday, game number two with the. Uh, Blackhawks and the Dragons going for a uh, shot to go to the sectional semifinal round. Let's move uh, west uh, quite a ways. South Newton hosting sectional number 52. And the cast and Comets uh, looking to get off the schneid in this sectional. Uh, got knocked off by North White in the uh, first round last year. And, you know, this group of seniors... Uh, broke through that ceiling so to speak last spring mm-hmm. in the on the softball diamond 
and uh, you know they're wanting to do it on the uh, basketball floor. Unfortunately, or fortunately, maybe that'll motivate them. Uh, have lost three of their last four games coming into the sectional. So, where do you think that uh, you know what effect will that have on the Lady Comets going into the sectional? Playing a pretty good West Central team in Game One. I'm buying stock in Caston. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I know I know these last two weeks haven't been pretty, but th- that was the whole point when we saw the schedule at the start of the year. Mm-hmm. Boy, this is going to be a tough last five games. Once they get through conference, those last five games are going to be tough. They played very, very well against North Miami in the one game they won. I mean, they scored 55 points in that game uh, against. A t- um, yes, they. They. I. I guess if 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 I'm worried about anything, it's kind of that. It, where's their energy level at right now? Because mm-hmm. they only scored. Because um, one one thing we talked about early in the season, they just wore teams down. But these last couple game, these last two games against Carroll and Bremen, it seemed like they were the team that got worn down. Mm-hmm. Um, Against again, Caston should be favored to win this sectional. They should. Yes, I know they lost to Tri County. I still think they're the favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a West Central team. They they will they will not. not again, Isabel Skills is a matchup nightmare for every one of these other teams in the sectional. Mm-hmm. They they have no answer, and Bell is just I, she I, she is capable of carrying a team on her back. Uh, to this again, the the struggle has always been for Cast is once you get into the postseason, it becomes more of a half court style of basketball. Can Winnemette get buckets in the half court? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we remember that sectional final two years ago when they lost at North White, and North White just put that zone on them, and it was just, it was just, it was like just kind of putting in shackles on them. So, can they get some transition buckets? And the other thing we talk about is, can they get a third double figure score to go along with Scales and Addison Simpleman? Yeah, you know, Maddie Douglas seems to be that. Uh, you know, we talk about Iverson with Winnemac. I think Maddie Douglas is that X factor for the Comets. If she can, you know, get up there and not only obviously handle the ball, but if she can get up there in that twelve to fourteen, fifteen point range, right, they're going to be sitting pretty good. Right, she scored thirteen against Bremen in their regular season finale. But again, I I trust that. If she scores double figures in a one A sectional, she'll be fine. Yeah. And again, in tri- against Tri County, basically everything. The first quarter was horrendous. The last three quarters were fine. Mm-hmm. Again, Tri County hit seven threes in that game, and Caston hit one. Yeah. Caston went one for fourteen. Uh, I'm not, again. I, I I've seen it before. I remember in tw- this reminds me of the 2017 Class Three A sectional when Valley lost to Northwood during the regular season, and they ran into Northwood again at the West Noble sectional, and it was just a totally different game. And again, Valley just flushed the regular season matchup, and they 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 won the they won they won the postseason game. Uh, again, Tri County must be respected, and Tri County got a great draw. They should beat uh, Frontier and North White and get to the sectional final. But yeah. again, I, I I still like Caston's chances. Yeah. I think the the biggest thing, obviously, is uh, that's going to be a lot of time on a school bus. Mm -hmm. It's not a quick drive over to South Newton from Fulton. Right. So they're going to have to be, uh, you know, well prepared for that. Right. Uh, The weather should not be a big factor next week. Right. Hopefully, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully we don't have that to be an Mm -hmm. issue and we don't get games moved around. So, but, uh, yeah, chances are that, uh, you know, obviously they got West Central in game one, uh, but uh, chances are they, if they can get past West Central, they should be, you know, okay against the 1-16 South Newton, but they uh, will probably meet up against Tri-County again in the championship. Mm-hmm. So they've got a, they've got a probably the hardest route there, but they're the best team there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Blair and, 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 and the Hoosier North Conference is the best, is, you know, again, Cass is the only Hoosier North team in the sectional, yeah, yeah, Midwest Conference for everybody else, right? Right, you and know. so that's a tougher conference than the Midwest Conference, right? Well, Blair and Pete want to make a, about three trips over to uh, South Newton next week as well, so we're hoping that the, the Comets can uh, get them there and that they can get that sectional championship, and you know, possibly, uh, you know, just like what uh, what happened in softball, right? I mean, once they got past that sectional, look out. You know, things just kind of went uh, really good for uh, the Comets. I guess the other thing I was going to talk about, and I kind of uh, glossed over a little bit, so uh, what also happened with the draw, you know, we changed formats. IHSA changed formats last year, so it's not the two-game regional like we had before, and they don't even tell you who you're playing or where you're playing. 
So they, they know – we know who each of these sectional teams will be playing, right? We just don't right. know where yet. Uh, right. We know whoever wins sectional 52 will play the winner of sectional 51 okay. in regional. That's the sectional with Fort Wayne Blackhawk and Bethany Christian in it. Okay. But we don't know where it will be played, and they won't announce until after the sectionals are over. And two of our schools are hosting right. regionals with Caston and Winnemag. Right. Again, if Caston wins their sectional, yeah. we'd be shocked if they didn't get sent to Caston. There's no guarantee of it, but yeah. again, historically, the IHSA has put teams in their home gym when they had the chance. Yeah. Uh, again, because there are, they're, it, they're just for logistical reasons, uh, not necessarily because they want to give bless somebody with a home court advantage, but because there are a lot of people from cast who have to work the sectional, working right. con, taking tickets, working concessions. Right. Let them have that. Let them have at least team. the home team. Right. Yeah to, yeah, to at least allow them to experience their home team and yeah. performing in the in the game. So sectional if, fifty would play. F- sectional forty nine, which so it would pass. You know, and again last year Argus played Washington Township, so that would you know potential rematch there. Yeah. Uh, you know Morgan Township uh, is in that one. Uh, you know Couts has struggled a little bit this yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. And then uh, and then the two uh, A sectional at North Miami. That's. Uh, uh, 36 would play it's the sectional 35 winner, and that sectional is at East Side. Okay. So, uh, and East Side's had a great year. You'd have to say East, the Lady Blazers probably are, are favored to win at home. Yeah. So, you know, that would be a potentially, you know, where would, uh, you know, who knows, would a, where would a Winnemac, if it were Winnemac and East Side, I would imagine East Side would have to make the trip to Winnemac, but, uh, you know, where else could that game be played? I mean, right. It's, it would be, if, if it were East Side and, Eastside and Wabash would be different. I mean, I imagine. I right, know. right. We're just uh, we're just speculating. Right, completely. And those those or, will be or announced. East, Eastside and Lewis Cass. You know. Yeah, that? yeah. And those sites will be announced at the conclusion of the section. Right, either very late Saturday night or very early Sunday morning. Yeah. And then sectional eighteen would play the winner of sectional seventeen, and that's the sectional at Highland. Okay. Highland won that sectional last year. Uh, Highland is a defensive-oriented team, but Hanover Central is going to be right there with them, and I expect a Highland-Hanover Central matchup on Saturday night. Okay. So again, it would be it's because of all this. It's po- let's say that Valley and Caston both win their sectionals. It's possible they'll both be put in the same gym. Yeah. On regional Saturday, and we'd have like a double header of sorts. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I would really love that. Yeah. It'd be great for the broadcast. Right. But again, with or who knows? What if Win- what if Winnemac wins their sectional and Valley wins their sectional? Mm-hmm. We could have a doubleheader at Winnemac. Right, right. Especially if sectional seventeen team coming from the region. Right, that would make sense. Send them to Winnemac. That's not too bad. Right. Yeah. And most of the regional sites are kind of central. I mean, there's no you know really far west. There's no really far east, north or, or south. They're kind of right. The closest thing to a region site is Laporte. But it's, that's, I don't consider that to be the region. Um, yeah, <laughs> Logan. Lo, think, Coming from somebody that comes from the region, they, you have your specific borders there, don't you? We'll have another half hour show on that <laughs> later. No. Uh, Laporte is not in the region. <laughs> Logan's Port, uh, I think, is close. Yeah, not too. Yeah, not not all like centrally located. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap the uh, uh, sectional preview show up. Uh, we are going to do our uh, normal talk in sports with Val, so uh, you can tune into that as well later on. But we wanted to do a, a little bit of a separate show since uh, we still have a lot of stuff to talk about on talk in sports. So good luck to all of our teams as they uh, begin sectional play coming up on Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week with uh, sectional coverage. Again, we will be at South Newton for Caston. We will be at... Uh, North Miami for Pioneer. We will be at Rochester for both uh, of our schools there, Rochester and Valley. And then we're going to get up there. Uh, Culver Marquette, the, the Culver uh, production team, is is covering that on Tuesday. And we will be there covering uh, Westville and Argus on Wednesday. So thanks for tuning in. and. Uh... <laughs>